One of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. And sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. If you can't see it, just ride on my faith for right now. Because y'all know I got ridiculous faith. I don't have to see nothing, y'all. I just need to hear God speak it. Amen? I live by faith. I walk by faith. Come on, somebody. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being shut. Ta -ta -ha. All my help come from the Lord. I need somebody here right now that know your job ain't what's keeping you, baby. Come on. That little income ain't sustaining you. Whether you make $100 a month or $5,000 a month, that money don't define you. But you want to stand up and give somebody a high five. Did Jesus keep it anybody here today? Tell them you gotta stop doubting so much. Just because your sister didn't get it, don't mean you ain't gonna get it. Just because your brother didn't get it, don't mean you, you ain't gonna get it. Sometimes you're gonna be the first one in your family. I need somebody to get happy right here. God gonna use you to be the first one in your family to break some stuff. Somebody give God another praise right there. And say, so I can't be doubting. Tell somebody I can't be doubting about. Yeah, either you with me or you're not. Either you with me or you're not. Hallelujah. But I'm believing God. Anybody in a tough situation right now? In a tough situation? I ain't talking about your fingernail being chipped and all that. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about you need no filly and no brick wall. Bump that. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about some real trouble. Because I'm looking for some people in this church that will praise God. And pray like my mama prayed a while ago. Knowing you got cancer in your body. Knowing you're getting ready to go to the hospital tomorrow. But will still stand up and pray and give God praise like ain't nothing in your body. You positioning yourself for a miracle. Don't you know God will get you to the hospital, get you on the table, and let the doctor examine you and tell you they can't find nothing when you praise God like that? Somebody give God another praise like that. And say, I'm not a doubter. I'm not a doubter. I'm not a doubter. I believe God. Good God Almighty. Then we have those people in the church. Good God Almighty. Tell your neighbor, in God we trust. In God we trust. Not in my money. In God we trust. We have them people in the church who are fixers. Look at your neighbor, sir. You're a fixer. See, we don't understand that the process is just as important as the promotion. And when God has you in the process, it's He molding you, He making you. And you praying, God, get them out of my life. God, move them from me. Do you understand they are sandpaper for you? They're not moving nowhere. God got them in your life to rub up against you. And every time they rub up against you, you don't like it. Amen. Why? God needs to bring some stuff out of you that you don't think is still up in you. But if you don't have no sandpaper around you, you ain't going to never get them rough edges off of you. Sometimes the folk in your life that disturb you the most, that get on your nerves the most, that bother you the most, are the people that God is using you to transition you to where he can ready to take you. Without them in your life, you can get where you're trying to go. That's why I welcome all my problems. I welcome my opposition. I welcome the stuff I go through. Why? Because I know the end of this thing going to be better than the beginning. I need somebody that will have a little church right here. How many know that the Bible says about Joseph that the devil meant it for evil, but God has turned that thing around and worked it out for my good? Somebody give God another praise right there. Tell your neighbor, don't be trying to fix everything. Come on, look at another neighbor and say, stop trying to fix everything. Yeah, sometimes we try to fix everything. I never shall forget, I was talking to a brother, me and David Williams. He was having some financial problems. That's why I'm very careful now about trying to help everybody. You better pray first. We got benevolence in this church and all that. You got to qualify. Tell somebody you got to qualify. You have to be a tither, amen. You have to be a consistent giver. Come on, somebody. We're trying to help people to try to help themselves. The guidelines, I don't know how I got down this rabbit trail, but the guidelines are the ones that determine that. Not me, not a board, not a committee. The guidelines say certain things. Amen, somebody. And sometimes people will get mad at you, and they know they ain't gave nothing to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to be in my church and I give nothing to the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, somebody. Listen, you got to be careful. Let me get back on track. Some of y'all don't stop looking at me. Amen. Let me get back on these notes right here. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Y'all done dropped off on me right here. Amen. Tell you the pastor still love you. They just trying to tell you the truth. Amen, somebody. This is God that we trust. Yeah, we try to fix everything. And me and David Williams were trying to help this brother out one time. He had fallen on some tough times, but we didn't know what God was doing in his life. We just knew we knew him, loved him, had the resources, wanted to try to help him. So he called me. I said, sure, I'll help. Amen. Just one of some years ago. Just my years ago. Somebody already thinking about something that happened to them. See that? I called him the other day. See that? I know us in the church. I know us in the church. I know us in the church. Just why this was years ago. This was about 20 years ago. Amen. I didn't even know you then. I didn't even know you then. Amen. Yeah, he called me and I said, yeah, man, when we got together and put the money together to give to the brother, David said these words to me. He said, Steve, the Lord spoke to me and said, I got him in this position. I am doing a work in his life to try to get him to trust me. Now, I've already cut some of his stuff off. Do y'all want me to cut y'all's off too? Look at your neighbor and say, you better be careful about trying to help everybody now. Because you better believe we're giving church in this church and we love to help somebody. But the devil is a liar. I ain't about to jeopardize my stuff up in here, y'all. You better holler at your girl right there and say, I ain't about to jeopardize my stuff either up in here. No. I need, I need, come on somebody. Sometimes God will put you in a position because he's trying to get you to trust him. He had me in a position where I had to trust him. No, no, there was a time my daddy-in-law would tell you I didn't have no job. No, I was jobless. We were insurance-less. Come on, somebody. No income coming in with a wife pregnant on the WIC program. So I'm glad I'm a brother that can feel your pain no matter where you are. Home and been there too, amen? But I told my daddy-in-law, look, I want to make an honest dollar. I got too many kinfolk in the drug game that offer me money trying to get me caught up. But I made up my mind. I want to serve God the right way. I need you to find me something where I can make an honest dollar. He said, we got an animal that have died under the screw in a teller. Will you go get that dead animal? I said, I don't care what it is. I don't care how far I got to go. I got to feed my family. My wife and my baby not going to be hungry because I'm too cool to go and work. Tell me where it is. I got his pickup truck, that blue F-150 pickup truck, drove to a teller, went down in the basement under the screw with a shovel and found that dead animal where the scent was coming up into the screw and drove his truck to the city dump and unloaded the truck up at the dump. They paid me $35 that day. But I was so happy to give that honest money. Y'all better hit me up in here. Sometimes you look at that, you don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they're going through. You better stop trying to be like everybody else. Are you willing to go through what other folks have been through? Somebody give God a praise right there. But while I was in the city dump, I prayed. I said, thank God my father-in-law found this job for me. I thank God I was able to come to the city dump and make these $35. I said, but God, I want a job. I want to be more specific. I want a job now. And while I was up there, amen, when I got back home, I got a call from the chicken plant. Come on, somebody. See, some of y'all too cool to work in the chicken plant. Some of y'all too clean to work in the chicken plant. Some of y'all got it going on too much to work in the chicken plant. But I was so happy to get that job. I went there, man, and I worked in that place. I didn't care about the smell. I didn't care about the boots. I didn't care about the gloves. I didn't care about none of that stuff. I was feeding my family. Come on, somebody. I was trusting God. I didn't know God said, I got a blessing for you down here. But if you can do this right here, sometimes you can't get what's over there. Somebody needs to have church with you right here. Because you don't want to do what's over here. If you can do what's over here, he'll give you what's over there. If you can submit over here, he'll give you what's over there. Somebody needs to stand up right there and say, I'm trusting God. I'm not complaining. I'm trusting God. I'm not too good. I'm trusting God. I'm not too clean. I'm trusting God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm believing God to do something in my life. If I can be faithful over a little, he's going to call me higher. He's going to give me more. Somebody give God a praise and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you really trust God? Are you waiting on the big car to say you trust him? Are you waiting on the love song to say you trust him? Are you waiting to get a new car? say you trust him. But if you really trust him, you can praise him up or you can praise him down. You can praise him early in the morning. You can praise him at noonday, but you can praise him at midnight. You can praise him when you're happy. You can praise him when you're sad. Ask Sunday was a neighbor. Are you sure you trust God? Can you praise him while you're going through? Can you praise him with a disconnect notice? Can you praise him after they repossess your car? Can you praise him with your house no do? Can you praise him with 
the sickness in your body. I knew you had to wait till you get healed to come in here and bless the Lord. I knew somebody that will praise God while you're going through. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a feeling that the Lord got a blessing with my name on it. Down the road, over yonder, but now I know I got to be faithful right here. I'm going to eat me some noodles, some pork and beans. trust him. My baby in trouble, but I still trust him. My husband want to leave, but I still trust him. My money's short, but I still trust him. My friends talk about me, but I still trust him. Folks walking out my life, but I still trust him. Grab your neighbor by the hand. As a neighbor, I call you a witness. 